everybody. Welcome. I got a really exciting one for you today. Those of you who know who this is know what I'm talking about. The rest of you, this is John Kohler. He lives just a few miles up the road from me in Las Vegas. The thing that makes him interesting is he grows a lot of his own food. Don't be fooled by his boyishly young looks. This guy is 97 years old. Just kidding. But he is one of those people that's ageless. He just doesn't age. So the thing that makes him unique and interesting is a lot of it is what he eats. So let's talk about that today. I think you're going to be fascinated, especially those of you who want to look younger, live longer, and be healthy. Thanks for inviting me over and, and all the people around the world into your backyard, John. Thanks for coming over, Marcus. I'm so glad to be here today and share, with the, share, share, the mess, share my message with your viewers. Now, John, what makes you unique and interesting is when we say you grow a lot of your own food and you source locally, we're not talking about chickens and pigs. No, I don't, I don't <laughs> grow any animal products. I, I do grow worms though, but they're in the soil to, to poop in the soil to give their worm castings to my soil to feed my soil. So what you eat <laughs> is what? Plants. I eat nutrient dense plants very specifically. And it's, it's, you know, a lot of people just could eat any old plants, but I focus on eating nutrient dense plants. So this is your whole diet, just plants. My whole diet is all plants. And yes, how long Marcus. have you been eating just plants? Started in 1995. And look at how he looks, guys. You know, these people who say plants are lacking in nutrients and they have nothing but anti-nutrients and you need to eat meat to have muscle and be young. Otherwise, you're going to wither away. I mean, this guy, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this 28 years. 20, almost 30 years. Look at the guy. But I've been doing it very specifically. I'm not just haphazardly eating, you know, plants out of the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, th yeah, that's a good point. What most people consider vegan is fake meat fake cheese melted over in, in an oven with, with uh hamburger buns and and crackers and pizza cookies crackers pies it's all junk food what people <laughs> consider plant-based what most of them eat has lots of sugar has lots of fake chemicals that look and taste like meat or cream or cheese or whatever that's not health what he's talking about is what you're seeing right here. He grows most of his own food. The rest of it he gets locally if possible. He does get, probably get some stuff from a grocery store. Yeah, no, I buy stuff from the grocery store. Like my main thing is, Marcus, every day I try to look at like, what do I have growing? How could I make the majority of what I eat out of my garden first? Second is, hey, when I go to the local farms in the area, I pick up food. What can I put in my you know, diet today from the farms? And it always changes upon the season. And then thirdly, I'm like, hey, if I need to fill in, I'll go buy organic produce at you know, different stores in the area. And then I'll even go to like the, you know, ethnic markets to fill in and get unique Those things. Those are the best. Yeah. yeah, yeah like like I, we get cactus at the Mexican places. Exactly. And fava beans at the Mediterranean ones. So another thing that John hasn't told you yet, those of you who don't know him, is you're thinking, okay, so he gets plants and he... He probably make what, what does he make? He make casseroles. <laughs> casseroles. <laughs> you know, What's that? What? <laughs> I have no how, idea. <laughs> how does he bake these in the oven? How does he stir them? And he makes stir fries. What does he do? You don't even cook your food most well, of it. Yeah, most of it I don't cook. I started heat processing, and I call it heat processing because it's not just randomly cooking my food any old haphazard way. I only use an instant pot, so it's always below like 240 degrees, so it doesn't create toxins. So, how much of your food would you say is Instapot cooked and how much of it is salad raw whatever. Yeah, so for the majority of the last 28 years like 99.9 .9 has been raw within the last maybe couple four years or so I started including small amounts of heat processed foods maybe 10 to 20 percent depends on the day sometimes zero. There you go. I mean look at them. Look at this. He is living proof <laughs> that you don't wither away if you eat plants. You're not, do you feel like you're lacking anything? I and mean, do you, you obviously have energy. I don't know. So I, have, I get regular blood tests, which I do encourage people on a vegan diet to get, to check out, to make sure they're not deficient. And I also have done microbiome tests on myself to right. make sure that my microbiome is as healthy as it could be because it's a big part of our immune system and the emerging research shows it is very important for you know health and longevity. Those of you who don't know what a microbiome is, it's your gut. It's your intestines. That's where all the magic happens. That's what, 70% of your immune system? Yep, 70, 80%. And most people don't know the value of that. And most people when they eat pizza, bread, <laughs> cheese, pasta, whatever it is, 
uh, or anything that feeds bacteria, yeast, sugar, dairy, whatever it is, you're hurting, you're getting the wrong bacteria down there. You're actually rotting in a way down there. And so you get sick. What happens when you get sick? The doctor gives you antibiotics. What happens what, when you take antibiotics? You're killing your army. You're killing the ones that are, look, that you, that are keeping you alive. So this is <laughs> what the, what is the main food source of gut probiotics? Uh, well, they like a lot of different things. It could be resistant what, what, starch. It could be inulin. Right. Right. You know, what, what's the general word for all of that? Uh, prebiotics. Prebiotics. But is it, for these people, fiber. 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 Well, specific kinds of fiber. Right. But gut buddies also like anthocyanins, like in the cauliflower. We're looking right. at the purple exactly. stuff right there. Right. So it's, many things. They'll eat resistant starches right. too. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Now, a lot of people say we can't. We're not supposed to eat plants because we can't break down the fiber. We don't have the. The, the, we don't have three stomachs like a cow does, so it, we're not supposed to eat plants. Well, the plant fiber, the starches, the stuff that we can't break down is not for us. Yep. It's for them. Yep. And that is how, do you know that you are more bacteria than human cells? So you got to feed these guys that are here. That's your army that's feeding you. I'm, I shouldn't be talking. He should be talking. <laughs> but, I, uh, you know, we, we, there's a lot of new people that are just joining us here, and I just want you to know that that what this guy's doing is shut up marcus talk john <laughs> talk. <laughs> i mean i just want to encourage you guys to eat more plants you don't have to go crazy like i do and i mean i like make 99.9 percent .9 of what i eat i make at home like i don't eat processed garbage i don't like vegan you know junk foods i don't like ultra processed foods like i make food with my two hands and it's a lot of work i'm not going to say everybody should do it because most of you guys probably shouldn't do it because you'd go crazy <laughs> but what you guys can do is you could make a smoothie a day or a fresh juice a day using your own juicer or your own vacuum blender you could buy an instant pot and cook some vegetables which is still hey cooking some vegetables in an instant pot is still way better than going out and getting a prepared meal at whole foods or junk food right but hey just put together a salad get one of those pre-washed salad pre-washed green tubs it's a pound at costco open it up pour some salad dressing you could buy a pre-made salad dressing i mean i incur I, I make my own so like lately lately i've been juicing sugarcane and blend that up with some macadamia nuts and some other herbs and spices and pour that over on the top so delicious right and you could eat more plants whole plants real plants nutrient dense so nutrient dense because leaves don't have that much uh substance to them there's like one calorie so you must eat you must get your fat you mentioned macadamia you get nuts or, or you get your fats from what so yeah i mean i get fats from my food so whole food plant-based is what i am so i eat majority of nuts and seeds is where we get my fats also avocado right small amounts of coconuts and i have started including some very high polyphenol um, olive oil from Greece that's like $90 a bottle so then you won't use it that fast. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get your protein, John? So my protein comes from greens. I mean, we're sitting in my garden. This is the winter time. There's greens all around us. And here's the thing. I concentrate my green vegetables, right? And you're like, how do you concentrate green vegetables? Well, so if you just eat one vegetable, right, you're not concentrating because your stomach can only fit so much and the greens don't have a lot of calories. So um, what I do is I'll juice a lot of greens. So for every day when I'm home and not traveling, I'll drink a quart of green juice, right? It's majority, usually romaine lettuce juice, may have celery, um, cucumber, and then also just lots of greens from my garden. So, I'm, and then I juice it to remove some, but not all the fiber. I drink that juice and now I'm getting nature's filtered water, filtered by the plants, the best filters on earth, not a pure or a Brita or none of them other things, <laughs> right? filtered by the plants, um, remove some of the fiber so now I could fit more and I'm concentrating them and I could drink it and it's easier to digest so it takes less of my body's energy to digest my food. I mean, we just had Christmas, Marcus, and I know a lot of people after their big Christmas meal, uh, after they eat, yeah, they're just uh, so, they just, I want to take a nap. Maybe they watch football and yeah, crash out because they're so know, tired, yeah. right? Juice is the exact opposite. Juice is the easiest thing to digest and that's why, you know, I drink a four, one quart of green juice a day, and that's about four pounds of the vegetables. That's you know, like IV goes right in your bloodstream. Right, yeah. So like every morning is usually when I drink my green juice. So I'm just before I even start my day, I've had the equivalent of four pounds of greens, all the nutrition in an easy to assimilate form. So my body and my bloodstream could take it up faster than if I just ate it alone, according to science. Now, did you hear what he said? He mentioned something really important, which makes him unique 
along, and that's why I like John. He's one of the few people that agrees with me, which is a really sore, sticky point for most people out there that are vegans. They are basically fruitarians, okay? They're sugar addicts. They like their fruit. They like their mangoes, bananas, and all, they make smoothies. It's just fruit, fruit, fruit. And they get very upset when, when I mean, okay, there's nothing wrong with fruit. Fruit's great, okay? It's supposed to, it's in nature. But, I don't think nature intended us to have just fruit. Even monkeys know to eat half fruit and half greens and a few dirty things. <laughs> but, um, so, he, John, you do a lot of greens. You do, like, tell, tell us your, your, your view on the fruit thing. Fruit's a healthy food. I'm not going to sit here and bash fruit. I mean, people yeah. that are in the fruitarian community say I bash fruit, right? I, the thing I bash is I bash overeating fruit. And in my opinion, many people on a raw diet where they're just like, eat unlimited fruit, right? You guys are overeating fruit because why? If you eat this much fruit, right? Then you have this much room for vegetables. So don't eat, if you eat this much fruit, then guess what? You have this much room for vegetables, right? So my goal, Marcus, is to get people to eat more vegetables because vegetables have a lot more nutrition than the fruits. I mean, especially the different yeah. anti-cancer, disease-fighting properties, um, the different kinds of minerals, especially. I want, you guys, I want you to, Marcus, before you leave, to taste some of my greens. Yeah, 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 you I could tell me how sweet they taste. Like, I will bet you, Marcus, that you would rather eat my greens, my, my, my komatsuna or my spinach, rather than a crappy apple from the store that has no flavor. Guaranteed, my my greens are sweeter than freaking fruit from the store. It's interesting. Some of it. What, what's interesting is natural wild greens are sweeter. Whereas if you have natural wild fruit, it's... It, it's not sweet at all. It's, the heart barely has a lot of sweetness to what you're buying at the store is hybridized. It's, it's bred for high sugar content, which is why people like it, which is why they buy it. But you go, go, go pick some berries in, in the wild and see what they taste like. They're, they're really small and they're not super sweet. Greens, on the other hand, are, it's interesting. Everything's kind of backwards. And bitter is what cleans your liver. Yeah, absolutely. And, I don't think we could get away from the hybridized food thing, but I think that people could take steps to, you know, trying to find more wild foods. Like my Instagram post the other day was the Mexican fan palm that my neighbor has. He lets all the little palm fruits or little berries drop on the ground. So when I was walking my dog, I'm like, oh, what are those things? And they look, oh, that looks pretty good. So I pop one in my mouth. It tastes like molasses and they butterscotch. Are they are sweet. Yeah, they're so sweet. They're but the sweet. thing is like, it's all seed, man. You got yeah, like yeah, yeah. that much yeah, stuff yeah. around the freaking fruit and that's a yeah. wild fruit, but yeah. these are so good. But like, you can't yeah. buy these because they don't sell them at the store yeah, unless yeah. it's a specialty place, you know? So, well, I mean, I encourage people to eat all kinds of fruits and vegetables and don't overdo, especially the hybridized fruit. Yes, a lot of fruit has been hybridized for the sugar content, but you know, more, you know, well-to-do people are hybridizing fruits for their anthocyanin or nutrition content. Of course, that's a lot rare, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing is like in the wild, look at what the birds are eating. Those those sweet <laughs> fruits, when they're ripe, they, they there's just, there's just like a swarm of birds just picking at it. They know what's good and they know what's ripe. And they know when, they only do it when it's ripe. They don't do it when they're not ripe. And a lot of stuff you buy in a store is not ripe yet they've picked unripe and i think the reason your stuff tastes so good is because you put all this nutrients in the soil and it just the plants are able to be who they really should be versus stuff that they grow with just npk or something you know on a farm yeah, absolutely marcus so you tripped over on the way into some of my supplements for my garden i get different kinds of high-end worm castings different kinds of soil humates with different kinds of minerals um azomite or rock dust to have up to 70 different minerals to my soil so i could have a really nutritious soil because a more nutritious soil grows more nutritious plants that taste better right. that, that are sweeter more that have more protein in them even more amino acids than deficient plants that are be growing you know in industrial agriculture you know as much as I eat and buy organic certified produce and even some conventional produce, right? I am against that industry because they are doing it for why? One reason. Are they doing it for taste or flavor for you guys? No. Are they doing it for, they want you guys to be healthy? No. They're doing it for money. And when money gets involved, things get convoluted. They cut corners. Cut corner, they do what yeah. they can just to make food that looks kind of good, but it tastes like nothing. And I hate it. <laughs> he gets a little passionate about stuff. I yeah. hate bad taste tasting food, man. <laughs> I don't want to get the wrong idea out there. When you see people say, I'm doing juice fasting, 
they usually mean fruit. Yep. They're juicing, they're concentrating the sugar. Did yep. you know one orange juice has as much sugar as a Coca-Cola? Hey, I know it's a different kind of sugar. I know, I know, but it's still sugar. And sugar is the universal fuel supply that feeds anything that's alive, good or bad. Uh, I know it, fruit is generally half fructose, half glucose. And that's a whole other video. But the point is, eat fruit whole. Don't juice it. So nothing against fruit. But if you're going to juice, do what John does. Yeah, so while I do juice some fruits, Marcus, I'm not going to say I'm a, I'm a purist, but, but what I will say... You're not 100% fruit juice. No. You what, mix it with I, stuff. Yes, exactly. That's what I was going to say, Marcus. I, if people decide to juice fruit for themselves, right, and if you have kids and they're on soda, I would say if you make them an orange juice, that's a step in the right direction right. and is a good thing to do. I'll never say that's bad because, hey... Orange juice fresh made is way better than soda. That being said, the better way to make orange juice than a stupid reamer thing or a press thing is to basically cut off the orange coloring, juice it with all the white pith. The pith yeah. well, if you juice it with the white pith, right, the juice sweetness goes down and the fiber goes up. There's lots of pectin. The bioflavonoids. And the bioflavonoids yeah. go up. Yes, there's lots of pectin in there. So now you've instantly made a more nutritious, less sweet juice. Now, the next thing I will say is I have a video that I think has a lot of views on YouTube now. It says, never juice fruits without doing this first to make it healthier, right? And in that video, one of the main things is I want you guys to minimally juice 50% fruit, 50% vegetables. My favorite vegetable to drink is jicama. I just actually bought some this morning at the Mexican market today. I bought like 50 pounds of jicama because jicama has the inulin. It's, it tastes sweet, but it doesn't have the sugar because it actually is a sugar that feeds our gut bacteria. You can get gas from that though, people who are- Yeah, if you're not used to yeah, it, you yeah. can get gas from it. Yeah. But I got some sun chokes, which they call fartichokes. <laughs> Those are really give you gas if you're not used to it. <laughs> oh my but God, you could, yeah. you, but if you start eating sun chokes regularly a little bit at first, right? Don't just go gung-ho little bit at first and build up and eat more over time, your yeah. body will get used to it and you'll no longer have the gas. The reason the, the jicama works so good with the orange juice or fruit juice is it's fiber. And fiber slows down the rate at which the sugar goes into your system. Yep. It, it, and so it's either fat or fiber that buffers the sugar. So yep. that's why blending is, is I, in my opinion, if you want to do fruit, throw in a blender. Like don't don't extract the the fiber unless you mix it with some other fiber. But then now you're now you're playing God. You know you're you're taking the juice from this thing with the fiber. But it's better than just juice. Right. Yeah. So what I would say, Mark, is, is I want people to eat fruit whole. I mean, yeah, you know, right. if, if you got to it blend it, it blend it, but you want to do vacuum blending because standard traditional blending could oxidize the food. I mean, a recent published study came out, Marcus, that showed if you like blend up uh, the berries with a banana, right? The polyphenol oxidase in the banana basically oxidize the polyphenols in the berries. And then when you drink it, it doesn't show up in your blood. They did, they did testing on this, right? But the, here's the thing that they didn't know, and I'll make a video on really soon, is that if you vacuum blend it, right? So you blend without the excess oxygen there, you're not gonna cause the polyphenol oxidase to go crazy because the polyphenol oxidase enzyme needs oxygen to go nuts and to work. So when you, when you vacuum blend in an oxygen deprived environment, you're gonna have more nutrition. And this is unfortunately something that no, not many raw vegans or even just people in general talk about, but I'm like the equipment guy yeah. and I know how to maximize the nutrition using specific kitchen appliances and tools, which is I, which I, I've been selling the juicers and the vacuum blenders. Wait, what's right? your website? It's Discount Juicers. This is an old website, but you guys should go to my YouTube channel, Discount Juicers. I go really deep on that channel, really showing you guys the ins and outs and how to process the food the most effective way to get the most nutrition out. And that's what I do. I mean, so it's not just I'm haphazardly eating food. I'm processing the food very specifically to extract the most phytonutrients so I could get them into me so that I could benefit from <laughs> Does he look anemic to you? Does he look like wasted away? I don't think so. No, I'm not. No, I'm not wasted away, Marcus. Yeah, that's the thing I would say is chew your food adequately into a mush. I mean, why do we feed babies baby food? Right. Because they don't have teeth. We have teeth. So our teeth are our best juicers and blenders. And I sell juicers and blenders. But I'll tell you guys, use your teeth before you buy a juicer or blender. But the problem is you guys are lazy and you don't use your teeth. <laughs> so damn it, use your damn teeth and put me out of business. I'd be glad, actually, if you did. <laughs> use it or lose it. People are so lazy. They, they don't even want to chew their food. You know, really, why do, why do people eat? They, for, for several reasons taste and texture. It's not because of the nutrient value. Yeah, that most people don't eat for nutrients. And it feels good on their tongue. And as soon as they get that texture thing, okay, what's next? And then they take another bite. They don't 
think about, oh, I'm getting nutrients in this. I need to like mush it up and you know, pre-digestive enzymes in the mouth and all that. People don't, you, you realize if, chewing releases pre-digestive enzymes, right? Yep. So, so you need to chew your food a lot because otherwise you're not going to get the full benefits in your stomach. Let's see. So what else excites you, John? <laughs> what else <laughs> excites me? Well, what else excites me, Marcus, is my fresh grown food. Honestly, we're sitting here in my garden. And I mean, if you buy some of the items, like I have kale here, kamatsuna, you know, spinach, if I go buy Costco a tub of organic spinach, which I did a couple weeks ago when I was traveling in Puerto Rico because I didn't have my garden, and I'm eating the spinach, I'm like, man, this stuff just blows. It just sucks. It just doesn't taste good to me. It's not vibrant. I mean, it was picked like a week ago, triple washed, sterilized, and now I get to eat it. And I, like, I wouldn't even eat it as a salad. I like, actually, I put it in a vacuum blender and blended it with carrot juice and some nuts and seeds for my dinner. Um, but you know, the thing is like the freshness really trumps, um, like a lot of nutrition and like the life force energy in the food, which is something it's, it's hard to really explain until you experience growing your own food, picking it fresh and tasting it. Um, even if you guys don't have space to do a garden, you guys could grow microgreens or even just sprouts indoors. It makes a huge difference that unfortunately is not talked about enough in my opinion. Yeah, another thing that you brought up is uh, sterilized and all that. Yep. One of the big uh, things that's floating around about vegans is they don't get B12, they don't get their omegas and all that stuff. Well, this, you pull something out of the ground like this garden here, it's got bacteria on it. What is B12? It's bacteria poop, right? I mean, you 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 probably got all kinds of B12 in your food and omegas. There's actually omegas in some of this stuff. People don't realize purslane is really high in omegas. Uh, sea buckthorn is really high in omegas. You don't have to suck on a fish to get it. It's, I, mean, I mean, algae is, has it. I mean, that's that's a that's a green thing. I was doing some research recently on some you know uh, scholar.google.com, one of my favorite websites. And actually there's a microbiome of plants and actually of uh, fruits and vegetables actually. So I'm gonna make a video on my channel really soon about it. It was so fascinating that some of the bacteria in our plants will cohabitate inside us. And of course, some of them make B12 and all these things. And I've supplemented my garden with additional bacteria, you know, designed for the plants. But also, hey, when I'm eating my plants, I get the bacteria inside me as well. Now I'm not gonna claim that my food has B12 on it or whatever, and when I eat it, I get B12. I still take a supplement and would encourage you guys to do also, but in an ideal world, we would get B12 from our food, and that is my goal. There's good bacteria and bad bacteria, right? I don't use things like uncomposted manure. That is where the E. coli comes from and why people get sick when they eat a salad and they're telling us, don't eat salads, you can get E. coli. Well, the problem is the growing practices are really bad with those growers. They're using manure. It's got the E. coli or the farm workers are pooping in the fields, right? That does not happen in my garden. I use, you know, pre-composted, mostly plant products in my garden to grow my vegetables. And you know, once again, I want you guys to be in control, control of what you eat by growing it, control of what you eat by making it yourself. I know most of you guys aren't at the point where you guys could grow your food, but you guys could always buy food and make it yourself, you know, so you guys eat healthier. Well, that's actually a good point. Yeah, your property isn't that big. How, big, how many square feet is your house? I mean, it's a small house, yeah. Mark. It's like 1,200 square feet, 1200 and this is just feet. a 5,000 square foot lot or yeah, whatever. Yeah, he something. doesn't 6, have 000. he doesn't have a big property. Now, I guess the, the difference is you don't have a big swimming pool taking up your whole backyard. You, <laughs> Zero. You, you're using it for something that's more like valuable for me. Well, yeah, this is something that's makes a lot more sense. You can actually, I mean, people. How much money do people spend on food every week, every month? You get it for free, most a lot of it. Yeah, I mean, I was out in the garden earlier today work in but I mean the cool thing is once you plant for the season like I started planting the garden you see now Marcus most of it was planted September October November maybe a little bit in December and now I'm just basically coasting because everything's growing and now I just get to come around and pick it Ooh, mint yeah mint fresh mint right there <laughs> so we're in the desert and desert by the way, for those of you who don't know what a desert is, it gets to be 120 scorching degrees in the summer, and it actually gets down to freezing in the winter. It actually, we're in the winter right now. And it gets cold at night, it gets down to freezing, so I'm amazed he's got all this green stuff growing here. How do you do this, John? Well, I don't do it, the plants do it, Marcus. So here's the thing, like, right? Different plants like different, um, you know, climate zones. So all the plants I'm growing now 
love the cold weather. They thrive in the cold weather. Right? They have what's called plant antifreeze. Well, it's actually technically not antifreeze, but it's like antifreeze for plants because when it freezes, they're resistant to the cold, right? In addition, like to, for us to build muscles, we need to lift weights, right? When the cold comes, the plant goes, oh my gosh, I'm gonna freeze. All right, we got the plant antifreeze, so that's helping me out. But the next thing it needs to do is it needs to make the sugars in it because sugar doesn't freeze like water will, right? So then the plants get sweeter, they get higher in concentration of sugars so that they don't freeze when the freeze comes because they know it's pretty much coming almost every night. <laughs> and in the summer, when it gets to be scorchingly melting hot degrees, there's, a, there's plants that, I mean, it's amazing Like you go around Vegas and there's green everywhere. Plants thrive. I mean, of course, they're desert plants, but, you know, I mean, there's a lot of leaves that are like paper thin and the sun is hitting right on it all day long and it's not withering up. Yeah, so, so in the summertime, Marcus, I have a whole different selection of plants that I grow. Some of these are the same and some will grow winter and summer, but most of them I have a whole different setup and a whole different set of plants that I grow for the summer that, you know, don't have the plant antifreeze. They would die in the winter, so that's why I pull them all out when the winter comes and I plant the ones that can handle the winter. And in the summertime, I plant the ones that like to transpire and can handle the heat. So what is transpiration? It's like when we sweat, we, we're perspiring that's how we cool ourselves down but a plant transpires so what a plant does it pulls up water from the roots and then it basically lets it out and evaporates it out of its leaves to stay cool so it doesn't fry up right so I plant a lot of plants that love to do rapid transpiration because they are from the tropics the places like you know Asia and the Caribbean that are used to the hot weather and they're used to transpiring and keeping themselves cool so that they could thrive in the summer and then I could pick their leaves and eat them as well. So I assume your website, what's your other website? With so my, my web, I have another YouTube channel which is called Growing Your Greens and that's where I teach the gardening. So I have videos on the 10 top plants, a plant in the desert for greens. So you can eat greens all summer long and then I'll, of course I'll have ones where I show my winter crops and all the crops I love growing in the winter that always perform well for me. People that work in their gardens have less stress and they live longer. It's better than sitting in a house all day playing Nintendo or being on social media. I mean, you're moving your body, you're out in the sun and nature. Uh, it, it, you need the physical, you know, standing up, you're moving your muscles. You're not just sitting there doing this, scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that that's good. I mean, you, you should be, people should be more in touch with nature like you and it's just good for so many reasons not just the nutrition it's the it's what it does to your soul i mean, feel so good just sitting here with this guy i mean he's got this youthful easy going energy i don't feel I, most people i sit with i get stressed <laughs> i could just hang out forever with this guy he's great he's, he's a good bud all right marcus so here's a question for you okay if gardening is so good and everybody out there watching should have a garden why don't you have a garden we travel all the time. <laughs> uh, hey, I travel a lot too, but everything's on a timer, so I don't have to do anything. Once you have it set up properly, and yes, that's where gardening is work, you know, if you set it up properly, you could walk away, right? Yeah. And it could grow without you, and actually, that's, that's what my garden does a lot of times of the year. Yeah, well, we also have a, a very small backyard because we have a swimming pool. Uh, we have swimming a, pool, we, take it out! Yeah, we have an HOA <laughs> that doesn't... Allow. Oh, yeah, HOAs don't allow backyard gardens in some HOAs. Oh, it's horrible because we, oh. we have a golf course right there. And, oh, yeah, so they could see in so yeah, that you can't, you're restricted. Yes. And we travel a lot, mm. but... So what do you eat when you travel? I do what I can, you know, so it depends. I mean, if I, so like this weekend, I might be going to LA. And if I go to LA, like that's just like my paradise because when I travel, like- Don't, don't count LA, that doesn't count. That <laughs> no, doesn't even count. if I don't travel to LA, the first thing I do is I hit up farmer's market. So, I mean, I was just in Puerto Rico. The first thing I did was hit Costco because that's actually the best source of organic food. You have Costco's in Puerto Rico? Yes, that was the wow. best source of organic food in Costco, at Costco in Puerto Rico. So I hit up Costco, loaded up on different fruits and vegetables. And then of course, as soon as the farmer's market came around, I was at the, all the different farmer's markets and stocked up on produce there. And in Puerto Rico, they have just roadside stands where you could just buy fresh fruit and stuff. The issue in Puerto Rico is the vegetables. I was really vegetable deficient there um, in Puerto Rico. Um, usually when I'm there, I go to Ann Wigmore Institute, which they have a big garden that I usually, you know, eat at their place. They also grow sprouts and microgreens. 
So, you know, when I travel, sometimes I'll have to not eat as many greens as I would prefer to. But, you know, normally in the continental US, like I'll go to farmer's markets and I'll just go to health food stores, maybe go out to eat when I'm in LA at a couple of raw food restaurants, but it's easy. And then another thing I do, Marcus, is I have a plug-in cooler that I could plug into my cigarette lighter in my car. So before my trip, I'll basically stock it up with just mason jars full of juices and prepared foods, you know, like salads and my cooked vegetable meals in mason jars. And I'll basically just have all the food I need to eat on my trip. So like I've already prepared it, it's pre-made and I just crack them open and drink or eat when I need to. And sometimes I'll bring different equipment with me. I'll bring, you know, vacuum blenders, sometimes some, you know, like an instant pot or some kind of steamer, depending on how long I'll go for. And then I'll bring like, I always have a lot, I'm always packed full of food because I'll find food at farmer's markets. I'll just bulk buy it. So I'm never going to run out of stuff. This is the part where half the people go, forget this. I'm going to Applebee's. You don't got to do none of the stuff I do. I'm going to say I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the part that most people should, should learn from John is the backyard. Having at least a portion of the food you eat, something that you are in control of, that you grow. Yep. Uh, or get, go to farmer's markets, start with that, you know, or, or at least go to the produce section of the grocery store. Don't go in the middle of the store and buy boxes and bags and jars of things, processed food. Get the stuff that grows in nature and eat it in a form as close to nature as possible. And you'll look like this guy and look, you can tell by the energy this guy has, he's, he's uh, not short of uh, nutrients, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> so anything, last words for people here? Sure, Marcus. So the last words I want to leave you guys with today is that I want you guys to eat a diversity of foods and eat a diversity of minimally processed foods. You know, best is to process them with your teeth. Get used to chewing more, right? Start off with softer foods and find the foods that you love and enjoy. Always try to source higher quality foods, right? Whether that means growing it yourself like I do, or whether it means growing your far going to your farmer's market, supporting the local farmers, ask the farmers, hey, when did you pick this? Go into your local grocery store and ask the produce guy, hey, what produce did you just get in fresh today that you just put out? Because I just want the stuff that just came in. I don't want the stuff that's been sitting here a week that you know nobody bought. I want the stuff you guys just put out, right? I also wanna encourage you guys to eat as much seasonal foods as you guys can because they have less food miles on them and they're generally gonna be fresher. And of course, you wanna get into the juicing of vegetables, primarily uh, vacuum blending. These are very easy processing methods that can allow you to concentrate and get more of these beneficial fruits and vegetables in you. And of course, if you gotta heat your food, right? The only way I recommend to do that is in an instant pot. I don't recommend baking, I don't recommend frying, I don't recommend microwaving. These could all be very carcinogenic forms or even barbecuing is even the worst way of heat processing food. Don't do it. <laughs> it's funny when you go to a restaurant and they, they know you eat plants and they grill a zucchini and they got the black lines on it or something they think this is gourmet you're like oh you, you just grilled it this is supposed to be good i'm paying money for this you know? paying money for toxins the black <laughs> yeah. grill marks that's funny but uh, well thanks john i really love coming over here you're such a great guy Thank you. uh fun to be with and i hope a lot of people are watching this because this is really inspirational and uh, I mean, he lives in the desert and look at this he's got his amazing jungle in his backyard that is helping keep him alive so hopefully this will inspire a lot of you I mean he starts small anything grow one plant on a pot on a windowsill start with anything and then just grow it from there every step you take in the direction of health is going to take you one step further away from not being healthy so your website is you can check out my youtube channels which is where i have my most information growing your greens which is where i teach you guys how to garden i have videos where i set up this garden which is overabundant now i had four circles and now I have 20 circles on this side of the garden and I have these long beds on the other side. So you can see my process where I started building this. I also share the best places to buy the soil and set up your garden. I have step-by-step -step videos if you've never done it before. So I make it easy. You just got to follow along. I also have a YouTube channel, OK Raw, which is where I share my teachings on eating a raw, vegan, nutrient-dense fruit and vegetable diet where I advocate for eating proper amounts of fruits and vegetables and other plant foods to build your microbiome. 
And of course, my final channel, Marcus, is Discount Juicers. That's where I nerd out, literally, <laughs> with all the equipment, with all the different juicers and blenders and vacuum blenders on the market. Share with you guys the truth on how to extract the most nutrition out of your food so you guys could benefit the most. That's like me with my photography channel. Right, exactly. Yeah, he nerds out. I watch his photography channel sometimes, man. <laughs> I need some tips. He's got the pro set up here with four cameras, reflectors, super hardcore lights, and all kinds of stuff I need to get. Oh, no, you don't. You know, <laughs> they, they watch you for your personality and your knowledge. That's really all you need, and you you, you shine there. <laughs> Thanks, man. And I keep selling this to people. It's not about the gear. It's about the <laughs> message. Exactly. And the soul, and you definitely deliver on that. So <laughs> thanks, John. Thanks for... Uh Hopefully, you know, I'll bet you a number, a number of people's lives have just changed because of this. I hope so. That's, that's, that's my main mission because I almost lost my life when I was younger. And I'm here today to, you know, give back and to live in service to others. And how, one of the ways I do that is through my YouTube channels where I get to educate people about this. So thanks for having me on today so I could, you know, get my message out to more people as well. Great. Thanks, John. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.